Hey, Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now, a viewer who had been watching our Great Smoky Mountain series commented the other day and asked if I could tie a sheep fly. And I'd only vaguely heard of this thing just by reading some of the books, but sure enough, it was in Don Kirk's book, uh, Great Smoky Mountains, Hatches, and Fly Patterns. So I said, sure, why not? It's not difficult to tie. It's kind of ugly, but in a cool, cool kind of way. But I did a little bit of research, and this guy was created by Newland Saunders, this guy right here, see what I'm doing? I'm learning some editing. Newland Saunders created this thing. This guy was kind of a legend in mountain fly fishing. Born in 1922, passed away in 2012, but in World War II, he was a sailor. Went to war in the Pacific in 1945. I'm a former sailor, it's kind of, kind of impressive to me. Now, he created this fly. Some of the other legends swore by it. Take a look at this guy, Cap Weiss. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about him until I did some research, but this guy just screams legends of mountain fly fishing. Look, he's wearing a, a fedora. He's got uh, the wicker krill, really old school. But before we get into the fly, one more really cool picture. Take a look at Charlie Bean. This guy has got his Liberty bibs under his old school rubber waders. Probably just got off the tractor and said, I'm gonna go down to the creek, do some fly fishing. So it's really kind of cool tying these old flies that our forefathers of the sport came up with that they tied and they fished. It's, it's really interesting to get into this history and to carry on some of the tradition. So tonight's fly, thank you, John, for recommending the sheep fly. I think you're gonna like it. It's a pretty cool fly, albeit a little bit ugly, but from what I hear, the thing works very well. So let's get into it. So there it is in the vise. I'm gonna be tying this on a size 12. It is a 2X long nymph hook. You could go with 3X long if you've got them, or even a small streamer hook, as I've seen some of the, the old, older tires tie. I'm putting a, a base of 020 wraps all the way up to the eye. And for the thread, I've got a brown. 70 UTC. I'm going to put a dam in the back, take it up to the front, lock it in, and take it back to the tail. Okay, when you're happy enough there and you've got a little bit of a taper, let's go ahead and tie in our tail. Now it is brown hackle fibers. Not Coachman Brown. Coachman Brown turned out to be a little bit too dark. So this is a, a lighter brown, almost a, a ginger, and a little bit more than a hook gap in length. Okay, let's go ahead and snip off this excess here. Now let's talk about the body. See the original says muskrat. Now if you've seen a patch of muskrat, it's very gray with the under fur, but then you see, see some of the light brown and darker guard hairs. Now I did tie a couple with straight up muskrat and it was very buggy. So I saw Kevin Howell tying it. He's got a video online. He mixed it in with a little bit of rabbit and then I, I think some uh, woodchuck. So I've mixed this in with rabbit, a darker gray rabbit. It is about probably 60% muskrat and maybe 40% of the rabbit. And I think that ended up looking pretty good. So go ahead and put a fairly loose noodle on here. It's probably gonna take you two or three applications and try to build the taper, try to make it narrower at the back fatter in the middle and then narrower at the front too, kind of like the football. Okay, when you're happy enough with your football shaped buggy looking body, now let's worry about our hackle. 
another brown one. And now I've seen this one tied and the few pictures you can see of this fly out there, you'll see it tied a few different ways. From coachman brown to lighter brown to a stiff rooster hackle to an almost a webby soft hackle. So I'm using a, a rooster hackle. It's not too stiff, but it's certainly not a, a webby soft fly hackle. And this is kind of how, how I saw Kevin tie it. He used a, a stiffer hackle as well. So let's catch this in with three or four wraps. I'm gonna pull that back, just really lock it in before I trim off this tip right here. Now, depending on how, how thick or how dense your fibers are, probably four or five wraps will get you enough hackle on here. Take your hackle pliers if you need them. I shouldn't need them. I've got a few inches of this right here. So what is that, three or is that four? Let's go. Let's go one more. And I've also seen this where it was wrapped all the way around or just a throat. So the Don Kirk book calls it a throat hackle, but the picture has it wrapped all the way around. So I guess that's a, an option you can, you can do. So let's go ahead and before we snip off that excess, let's build a little bit of a ramp right here and really lock this in. Maybe we can get some of these fibers laying down a little more so. Well, they're not laying down too much, but I think we can live with this. And we can try to. We can push it back and take some medium wraps on farther back and see if we can get this hackle to lay down just a little bit. These are medium wraps right now. And a couple of tighter wraps as I get back up here. I'm going to have a little bit of trimming there, but I like the look of that. See, the hackle is leaning more back, not like a dry fly at all, more like a nymph. Now, here's where we have another option for the wings. If you've got some dyed brown, strong, grizzly hackle, say like this right here, that'll work. It will actually look pretty good One of the for the wings. They'll look about like this. See, this... These, this feather's not too dense. This, I'm holding it right in front of the fly and you can see through it, so not too dense there. But if you've got some, some natural, maybe a little bit more denser fibers of a grizzly, I think this one looked just a little bit better. So I've pulled two of these tips off for the grizzly tips, and I'm gonna put them, the dull sides together so that you're seeing the dark sides. Okay, now it's about, the wing is about two thirds to three fourths of the body. Now if you tie them in straight vertical, they're going to end up looking like that, which is not really how the fly is intended to look. So what I've seen, in the one video I've seen tied, turn it a little bit on its, cant them a little bit toward you to lay them sort of flat on top of the body. See what I'm saying right there? Instead of straight up, kind of lay them a little bit flat and they will, the end result will be the wings laying a little bit farther back. So let's give this a shot. Get our length. Well, that one's spinning on me. Try to get our length right there and then push it down. That's a loose wrap, there's a medium wrap, and that's tighter, let's see how they look. Okay, I like that right there. They're not sticking straight up, but they're not laying totally flat along the body. So we'll go ahead and a couple of tight wraps to secure that. Let's get in here and trim these this excess off right here. And while we got our scissors out, go ahead and get that rogue fiber there. Now, let's just clean up our head. So push that back, take my thread right back to the eye, and I'm gonna build this little ramp. Now I've got a little stubby sticking off the bottom right there. I don't know where that came from. Let's see if we can get that real quick. It's probably from that hackle. Okay, didn't get too much of it, but we can bury it or ignore it. It is a nymph, you don't have to worry about it being a tiny head. 
and I think that head right there is just about right. So I'm gonna put a five turn whip finish on it. And then we'll worry about the cleanup. So you might be tempted to get in here and start trimming away all these guard hairs, but I'd probably advise against that. I'm gonna trim off this one hackle that's going really askew right there that I did not get, but let's go ahead and get that. So I'm gonna leave the guard hairs in there, fish it just like it is. I'll put a drop of head cement before I call it done, but there you have it, the sheep fly, another Smoky Mountain Appalachian fly that I've never fished, but I hear it can be an amazing pattern. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you give it a shot too.